Now then, welcome to the channel. I'm Andy and I'm an amateur landscape photographer. In this video, I'm going to show you the five simple steps that I use to take a long exposure photograph. I'm at Tarn House near Ambleside in the Lake District. So, without further ado, let's crack on and see how you do it. Okay, so step one, what we, need to, what we need to get hold of is basically our ISO, our aperture and our shutter speed. So now I tend to use apertures between f11 and f16 for my landscapes because that, those apertures are going to give you a good depth of field so you get everything in focus. What I'll tend to do is once I've found my composition I'll put the camera into aperture mode and select my preferred aperture. So for example, let's say f16. I'll then use autofocus on the camera to get the focus right for the, for the picture. Once we've got the aperture, ISO and shutter speed, we can then move on to the next step, step two. <sighs> Tell you what, it's absolutely beautiful here today. It's so changeable the weather but the light keeps keeps changing and creating some cracking compositions. I, I've been taking quite a lot of photographs while I've been there, been walking around doing this video. It's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, it was just a quick one because I forgot to say in step one that once you've got it in aperture mode and you've got the information that you need, you need to flick it into manual mode because you're going to need to be able to input what your shutter speed, aperture and ISO is when you put your ND filter on. So once you've got that, into manual mode. Step two. This is a really important step, this one, because if you don't do this step using autofocus, you're going to find that the picture is going to be blurry at best. You've got to flick the camera into manual focus. So once you've used auto focus to get it sharp, use manual focus from now on. So flick your lens over onto manual focus, set manual focus on the camera, whatever you need to do for your particular camera type, and lock that in. Because when we put the ND filter on in a few seconds, the camera will start hunting for focus because it won't be able to see through the ND filter properly. So lock the camera into manual focus. Okay, so I just wanted to just, just take a moment just to just to show you, you can hear the cows in the background coming to coming to welcome welcome the visitors. It's this 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 uh, this this place is absolutely magical. It really is. I mean, my mum said I'd been here as a boy, but I can't I can't remember coming here. But today, I mean, you've got the sun just about to set, probably in the next hour or so, on this side, on my right hand side, and it really is just an absolutely magical place. It's, uh, I'm pretty much the only one here, and uh, it is absolutely superb. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful place. One that I'll definitely be coming, coming back to in the future. Wow, superb.
Okay, step three, and in typical Lakeland weather, it's raining. So, step three, we've got our ISO aperture and shutter speed from our step one. We now need to use that in an app that I use called Exposure uh, Calculator. Now you don't have to use this app, there's loads of different apps on, uh, on the market. This, this one's free, that's where I tend to use it. And basically what I'll do is, I'll put in my ISO of 100, because that's what I usually tend to try and use. ISO 100, my aperture, which we said was going to be f16, and then my current shutter speed for what the camera would use if basically I was taking the photograph without any sort of ND filter. Now, you can use any sort of ND filter for long exposure, and ND4, ND2, you know, different stops. If you want, to, I, I tend to use a 10 stop filter when I'm using uh, when I'm doing my long exposure if I can. So this app basically you'll just put in your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Then put your ND filter that you're going to use, and it will recalculate the shutter speed for you, which is the length of time you're going to need to hold that shutter open to get the correct exposure. Now. Bear in mind that these things, they're, they're close, but they're not always bang on. The light, if you're doing a long exposure of say five, six minutes, could change throughout that photograph. So it's important that use it as a guide. If it looks like it's got darker as the photograph's been taken, might be worth just holding that shutter open for a little bit longer. And the opposite, obviously, if the sun comes out and it starts to get brighter, might be worth just taking a little bit off. With long exposure, you're better off exposing a little bit to the left of the histogram and having it slightly underexposed than being to the right and having it slightly overexposed. Because when we get it back into Lightroom, we can then amend the exposure to reflect what we want. Okay, step four. We know how long the shutter's got to be open now, but if it's over 30 seconds, you're going to find that probably on most budget DSLRs, you're not going to be able to, to keep that shutter open for longer than 30 seconds unless you're in bulb mode. So you need to select bulb mode on your camera and you need to plug a timer in. Now these timers are about 15 quid. I, I carry one in my, my bag all the time, just in case, you never know. So you can go over 30 seconds because some of these, like today, I've been taking some pictures and it's been saying really I want to be around 50, 55 seconds which if I didn't have a timer with me I've just got no chance of keeping that shutter open for, for long enough to get the correct exposure. So plug the timer in and we're almost ready to rock and roll. Okay, so I thought I'd just touch briefly on why you'd use long exposure and to be honest this here today has not been the best example of when you would use it because the tarn is basically milk pond flat so you wouldn't really need to but the video is about long exposure and I've come to a beautiful location so I thought well I'd better see it through um, but generally you'd use long exposure for, 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 two, for two reasons really I suppose the first one is to, to show no motion so you've, you've seen these pictures of of piers going into the sea where it looks like they're just going into a, a sort of a bed of clouds and uh, you also see long exposure on fast flowing rivers where you try and use it to show movement. I think um, generally I, I tend to use long exposure for both but probably more to slow movement and I think that when you try and do that and you try and you try and get it so that you've got a picture of the lake or the sea that's perfectly flat it's really important that everything else around what you're trying to slow down and stop is 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 not moving because if there's wind blowing and you've got trees in the shot you'll find you get a lot of motion blur off them and you won't have sharp focus so i think that's that's probably my advice on there uh, on when and where to use long exposure i mean i love it i think it's i think it's absolutely brilliant what got me into photography is long exposure i remember seeing a, a tillo rufo on on youtube and thinking wow that's uh, that's some serious photography right there so and i think the thing as well to, to bear in mind with it is you don't need a lot of expensive equipment I mean, I'm using. <laughs> you can hear, hear my friends who are who are still here in the background. But I think that I mean, I'm using today a second-hand lens off eBay, which is a Nikkor 14 to 70 mil. I've got a, a Tokina 11 to 16 mil f 2.8, and I've got a Prime 35 mil lens. And to be honest, those three, I mean, they're not expensive lenses, but you can get some good results with it. It's all about how you use them and, and, and using the composition 
skills that you learn and, and things like that. So I think in another video we'll touch on, on composition because I think for amateur photographers often composition is, is the key because you, you tend to find that it's taking your photograph from a nice pic that you, you take with your phone to you know, a, proper, a proper nice photograph but we'll do a different video on that later on as we move through. So yeah, but it's absolutely beautiful here, absolutely stunning, really good. Okay, the fifth and final step then. Just one first, one quick check to make sure the camera's in manual focus still, because if it isn't, then the camera's gonna start hunting around when you try and take the picture with the ND filter on. So, quick check, make sure that's still in manual focus, and then put the, put the ND filter on, timer's plugged in, we know how long we've got to expose the photograph for, and it's ready to click the button. One thing I'd say on ND filters, I don't use really expensive ND filters on my camera because I've not got really expensive lenses and I think that there's not a lot of point in really going out and spending four or five hundred quid on some really expensive ND filters unless you've got a really expensive piece of glass that you're going to put them on. So just, just my preference um, and then you're ready to take it. So hold the timer open for as long as it's needed. You might need to take a couple, maybe three, to, to, to just play with it. Check the histogram on your camera when you've taken the first one because that'll tell you whether or not you're just slightly underexposed or you're slightly overexposed. So you can play with that and then you're ready to go. Okay, there you go. There's my five, five steps that I take for, for long exposure photography. I mean, you can blend and mix and do whatever you like. I mean, they're just the five that, that I found work for me. <laughs> Friends are still here. So, anyway, I'm going to take some more, some more photographs now because the light's just absolutely perfect. So, thanks for watching this video. And don't forget, if you like the content, please make sure you, uh, you subscribe and hit the bell button so that you catch all my uh, future content that comes forward because it's going to, be, going to be a bit coming forward in the next few weeks. So, I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much. Wow. Superb. <laughs>